Hi, so this video is a little bit different from the rest of my videos, but if you are here it's because you are applying to art school or animation school, or at least you are considering to. So today I will be reviewing the art portfolio that I put together to apply to colleges. I will also briefly talk about what schools that I applied to, which ones I got in, how I got in. And I will say I think this video is going to be very hopeful, because you'll see that my portfolio was not one of those amazing portfolios that you see on the internet. If I did it, most likely so can you. And since I've done college and I've been in the real world for a while, at the end I'm gonna talk about my experience and if I think it's worth it or not, would I go to college again? Here it is, my college application portfolio. First, I want to start with a little bit of my background. I was an international student applying. I don't know if that matters for art school or animation school applications, but my GPA was 4.0. Yes, I was a nerd. SAT scores, they were pretty average, they weren't great. And regarding the TOEFL test, which is what I needed to take to prove that I could speak English properly, I got a 97 out of 120. Prior to college, I didn't have any formal training when it came to art. I had no clue what figure drama was, anatomy, composition, values, light, color theory, none of those things. I will say that I did go to a very creative high school, but it was creative in the sense of a lot of dancing and a lot of theater, but we didn't have any formal art class. And even worse, while I was in middle school and junior high, I actually used to hide that I knew how to draw or that I was okay or goodish at drawing, because back then, you know, it was like seen as gay. So I would pretend that I did not know how to draw. So I think that was a lot of wasted years that I could have used to improve my art. But anyway, the point is, I didn't make it to art school. So the first school I applied to was Pratt. Here's my little congratulations folder where my acceptance letter came. Here you can see all the housing options and everything. And my plan with that one, I applied as undecided. Go in as undecided, test the waters, and either go for graphic design or animation. Because graphic design seemed to be like the safer choice within art school. And I decided to apply because it was number 11 in the top 20 animation schools back then. And right now it is number 7. Here you can see the list. In this school, they gave me $12,000 yearly as a scholarship or as a grant, which now looking back at it, I think was very generous, especially looking at my portfolio now, I don't think it deserved this amount of scholarship. But if I got it, I guess it was for a reason. So continue this journey with me. Well, after Prater applied to Ringling, I don't have my acceptance letter, but I have my little leftover of the calendars they gave me as a gift. I applied to Ringling because it was like one of the top, top, top animation schools back then and it is still now. Right now it is number three in the top animation schools in the US. Back then I think it was number two. It was like my top school, my top choice. I originally applied for character animation, but that program was full. You know, it was like the most popular program and they had limited slots, so they accepted me. But I was accepted on the condition that I had to choose another major and I could not transfer to character animation. Here you can see the form that I filled out to switch to the motion design major. And I think I would have enjoyed that path if I had taken it. Third, we have RIT, which was my last option. The school did not seem artsy at all. Here I got accepted and I ended up going to RIT. I'll explain that better later. Pretty much it was because of money. But basically it was the best decision that I could have made. I'm very happy with that decision. I'll explain all that in depth later after we review my portfolio. Back then I remember it was number 19 when it came to animation. Right now it's number 12. There was a huge improvement in the program while I was assisting RIT. Also I was gonna apply to SVA. I ended up not applying there because, you know, applications cost money. But again, I'm glad I didn't because later on, most of my friends from New York City while I was interning in New York, they were going to SVA. And we used to compare our programs a lot. And according to them, we had together while them were a mess. And we were working on our thesis at the same time. And I will say, I don't think they had enough guidance. But SVA has a bigger name and has bigger connections. But anyway, now let's look at the portfolio. Let's quickly bring up Pratt's portfolio requirements here. It hasn't changed much, it's pretty much the same. 12 to 20 pieces of work, 2D, 3D, or time-based media, that means video, film, slideshows. I pretty much sent the same portfolio to the three schools that I applied to, and actually, RIT did not require a portfolio, I sent it anyway. I know some people go to programs that help you prepare an art portfolio for college. I didn't have that luxury, so I only had, you know, YouTube, Google, and a dream. But we made it work. We're gonna review 20 pieces today. I'll try to be very brief, because I know that's a lot. Two of those were animations that I did during my time in high school, so I'm gonna put those at the end. Yeah, let's just get to it. Piece number one. 
So I'm gonna call this one reflection on the ball. This was made with graphite pencils and like you saw in the requirements you needed to do observational drawings. So you know I was like okay I'm gonna draw something that is not from a photo. That was a reflection of my room. Probably I will say this is one of the strongest pieces. Also I know for each one of these pieces you have to make an an art statement, any title. I don't remember the titles, I don't remember the art statements. All right, piece number two. So this was a kit made with charcoal. Um, this was the first time that I actually used charcoal. I got really dirty and I felt so legit and official. It's definitely not the greatest drawing. It doesn't have the best anatomy, but I put it in because I thought it made me look very professional and it made me look that I had a very traditional art background. So that was my thought process and that's why I included this. Um, I had made another charcoal illustration that I did not put in, which was a Bob Marley, but that was considered to be fan art and college professors are not very fond of fan art. So here's a tip, do not put fan art on your portfolio. Then we have these two here. They're also graphite pencils. There's nothing really deep with these two. I just wanted to say I know how to do anatomy, even though back then I didn't even know it was called anatomy. I would call it realistic. Are they realistic? I mean, the hands are fine. It definitely needs better highlights. And basically, these were my feet. We continue. All right, this was my self-portrait. And we're starting to get a little bit more conceptual and creative here. You know, like before it was very realistic, simple, basic, and now it's conceptual, unique, surreal, a little bit surreal too. It's reflecting on things, and then a pocket watch, I don't know why, because I never had a pocket watch, but I think it's kind of cool that the silhouette of my face and hair, it's made out of the headphones and the chain of the pocket watch. This is an iPod Touch. It was not the best execution, but I think it had a cool concept. But clearly you can see how I didn't know better when it came to composition and the rule of thirds and how to make a composition interesting. But I think it's a very normal rookie mistake. All right, next. Back then I was obsessed with Imagine Dragons and the song Hear Me. This illustration was inspired by the line that says, can nobody hear me? I got a lot that's on my mind. And then you can just see here, that's my face. You know, it's like my mouth and my nose screaming. And then I have all these little silhouettes or people giving me their back and running away or walking away from me because they couldn't hear me. So I had a lot to say, but no one was paying attention. People were ignoring me. But actually, I do like that one. I think that would be on my top five. All right, now we continue on the deep emo phase of my life. Here is my manatee. Why? I was obsessed with Melancholy Hill by Gorillaz. And there was a line that says, up on Melancholy Hill, there's a manatee. And listen, for some reason, I related to the manatee. I felt that I was that manatee. This was the baby that I was not willing to give up in my portfolio. So it was like, this needs to make it because emotionally it was like so valuable to me. Oh, actually, and you know what? At least the subject, it's not in the center. So that's good for a change. All right, so now I was switching it up. I was bringing something different and something new. Watercolors. So we have Mr. Earth and then Mrs. Galaxy or something. And they were meant to go together. They were like, you know, a little series, I guess. I wanted to show color with these, but honestly, like this doesn't show any color theory or knowledge or understanding. There's no palette. Basically, I just did very straightforward coloring like kids would do, which is sun, yellow, sky, blue, trees, green, flower, pink, pretty much that. Again, here you can see that I didn't understand lighting. I mean, I did sort of try. You can vaguely see that these shadows are being casted. Oh, also, this is like the hair. The galaxy was like her hair, which again, I think it's like a cool, cute concept, but not the greatest execution. It's very flat. I didn't draw a face. I didn't draw a face. And now we have what I call the Muses. So this one was a combo of graphite pencils with watercolors. But if you if you want me to be completely honest with you, the thought process behind this piece, I remember seeing how artists usually had a lot of nudes in their portfolios. And I was like, I need to add some naked people here. I thought with this, I was killing the game. Right now, I'm just like, Marcel, no. Honestly, like, I think this is not a good portfolio. But if anything, I think this shows you that you don't have to be a protege to make it to art school. Because I know it can be really intimidating, you know, like, some kids really have, like, insane portfolios. Next. So this is just a little piece that I did 
based on my best friend and I playing video games. Again, this was an emotional piece. I think it was cute. I thought again here that I was doing like cool color situations like with the gradients, but not really. Yeah, I don't know. Again, all right, I'm gonna call this one Around the World. And my thought process behind this was, oh, I need to show some variety. I need to add some different styles here. Honestly, the line work is not horrible. And I used to tell myself that I didn't draw the face because it was like an artistic decision. That's not true, to be completely honest. I didn't draw the faces because I thought I would ruin the illustration if I did. And let me tell you another tip. Believe it or not, the people who review these portfolios, they can tell when you do something like that. If you don't draw a face, if you don't draw a hand, if you don't draw feet, they'll know it's because you don't know how to draw them. They would rather see you try and not be perfect at it instead of then avoiding it because you don't know how to. So yeah, I believe it's better an ugly face than no face at all. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. So you know how they recommend you to show pieces that are gestural or loose or sketches that are not finished? So these two were my version of loose and gestural. Back then I had no clue what a loose sketch was or what a gesture was. So in my head, it was like, do something careless in under five minutes to show them that you can be spontaneous. And that was like my thought process with these. You can have scribbles, but like make sure they're intentional. These were not intentional. These were just like crazy. So this is my PSA. This is a good gestural sketch or loose drawing. This is not. Yes. No. The point of a gestural sketch is for you to show them how you think on the page and how you find that anatomy, how you find that volume. Next. This is another graphite pencil illustration of Emo Me. Nothing groundbreaking. And then we have this, which I was again, let me switch it up. I'm gonna bring color pencils in and show them that I can do color. But if anything, this just shows that I was horrible at perspective and volume. Everything's very flat. And then we have the last four. This was just my puppy. It's not the greatest illustration ever. And these were mostly filler. I don't think I added all of them to the applications. Probably I switched them up. But to be super honest, my thought process behind this was I'm gonna show them that I can draw hands. This is so in your face. Being very flexible with 18, 17 year old me, like I understand the intention, but again, not the best execution. So those were the 18 pieces that were illustrations or drawings. And now I have my two animations. So this was Paperboy. This was a stop motion animation that I did. I drew all these little paper boys frame by frame, then cut them out, glued them onto sticks, removed those sticks in Photoshop, and I took every single photo. Yeah, it was insane. That was a lot of work. I remember coming back from class and spending hours very late at night working on this instead of doing homework. And then I put it all together in iMovie. It was on YouTube before, but it had copyrighted music, so I had to take it down. I think this was a very strong piece for an undergrad application. And to this day, I'm still very proud of it. And then I had my other animation, which was a 2D digital animation. I did this one for a movie night event that my senior class was throwing back then. And I did this using Anime Studio, and I begged my dad to get it for me. I was like, please, dad, like, give me this program. So so I guess these two were the things that saved me because I don't believe this was strong enough. But you know what? Maybe these were good enough and I need to stop putting them down. I don't know. Um, I just tend to compare myself to people who are like really, really good. Probably like the 1%, you know, like the protégés. But enough of that. Now let's talk about why I chose RIT, my experience briefly, and if I recommend art school or animation school. RIT was my last option because it was the least artsy one and I really wanted to go to the best or one of the best animation schools in the US. But ultimately, it was a matter of money. RIT had an international program with my country where I was able to get a full scholarship. But it ended up being the best fit for me and what I was looking for. I majored in film animation and concentrated in 2D. But basically, I dabbled in art, filmmaking, storytelling, video, sound, even 3D. And I could go on forever on why it was the best school for me, but that can be another video. Is art school, animation school worth it in general? Well, I think ultimately college is what you make out of it, or art school is what you make out of it. If you do go, I encourage you to 
really become an artist, not just someone who paints or someone who draws. An artist is someone with a POV, someone who knows how to deliver a message, someone who knows how to make something look good. Even if you don't think there's a difference, there is a difference. You need to be able to look at the big picture, you need to see beyond the medium, whatever medium it is that you're working on, and then you realize how useful you can be across the industry and the world. Color theory, composition, storytelling, all those things are universal. And yes, all these things probably you can learn them without going to art school. So I don't think art school it's completely needed. I think art school it's sort of a shortcut because it just puts you for two, three, four years in this bubble, in this space where you only breathe, think, eat, sleep art and your main focus is to just produce art and make projects which to me that really worked. I know a lot of people felt pressured and a lot of artists say they cannot work under pressure and while you're there you'll also realize how small the art industry is. DreamWorks and Disney and Pixar and all those companies like they seem so unattainable but then you realize that you're just one connection or two connections away. I have like friends that work at Nickelodeon, friends that work at Pixar, friends that work at Disney and you never know when those contacts will come in handy. I will say that I've been really stable since I came to college, very comfortable. I did work at a studio in New York, I used to work at Titmouse, and then I moved back to the Dominican Republic. From here, I work as a contractor and freelancer. I have done video editing, 3D animation, 2D animation, motion graphics, graphic design, and now I even do packaging design, and you might ask, how is that even connected to animation? If in animation you design props, I am just designing props for real life. So again, I think everything is pretty connected, and you can just jump around the areas of the art industry a lot easier than you would think. However, I will say like, be objective. You don't have to be the next deli. Like I know people who were not the best drawers at all and like they're working in the industry and they are great at what they're doing. But there were other kids that truly did not get it and I think it's really sad. Do I recommend you going into depth for this? No, I do not. That's not what I am saying. I know I am talking from a position where like I don't owe a cent because of the scholarship that I got. However, I know people who went to college, like one of my roommates, really poor. He came from a very poor family. He took a lot of loans. I'm pretty sure he has most paid all of it by now and he even bought a house and there were other kids who the parents paid for everything and they're not working in the industry and they don't even work doing anything art related anymore so it can really go both ways obviously gauge and measure your risk and how much you're willing to take that risk but yeah I do think art school could be a great time of your life a great opportunity if you take advantage of it so I would do it again anyway I really hope you found this video helpful make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel let me know in the comments if there's also another topic that you would like me to cover Ooh, let me know if you're going to RIT let me know if you're going to Pratt, let me go if you're going to Ringling to live my dream. Even though it's fine, like I love RIT, I wouldn't change RIT for anything in the world. Let me know what you think of my portfolio. You can roast me to pieces if you want as well. I already did. I'll see you in the next one.